If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to sew along with you this amazing bag. This is the Hathor bag by, I hope I say this right, Sakartan Patterns. Thank you Mary Jo for allowing me to make this tutorial. This has been on my list to make for quite some time and I'm so happy that I finally got to do it. Now, this bag, the front and back panels go together so uniquely. Um, there is piping on the front here. Do not be scared of this piping. This piping is not hard. This is a super easy way of doing piping. I chose to use this beautiful cork fabric from MM Cork Supply as my kind of feature print. It's just gorgeous. And then I used Mora Faux Leathers from uh, Emmeline Bags. I don't remember what these colors are. I think this one is olive and this one is the burgundy. I don't know, but they're Mora's. All my hardware is from Emmeline Bags as well. Um, let me show you some of the features of this before we get into the nitty gritty of things. So again, it has a zipper pocket along the front here. This amazing uh, piping accent. Again, don't be scared of it. Recess zipper. And on the inside of this, I did my usual zipper pocket with overlay and my two slip pockets. I do the linings of my bags the same regardless what's in the pattern. I can't actually remember what is how she does it in the pattern, but I think she does things pretty similarly um, as I did it here. Uh, this is a turned bag. Uh, it was really easy to turn. We left the whole bottom open and turned it through the zipper pocket on the inside and then finished the bottom through there. I do have carpal tunnel, so I like to finish all of my bags that way. It is an arm saver, so I show you how I do that. Um, Interfacing in this bag, I used, for all of my cotton fabrics, I used EB Fuse Alite, which is similar to an SF101, so any medium woven interfacing for your cotton pieces. My exterior pieces, I backed with foam. I used the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. Um, on the bottom, I have some Decable Heavy as my base stabilizer that I got from Emmeline Bags. What else, what else? Oh, my piping, I do. I did make my own piping for this out of my Mora vinyl and my piping cording I got from Galaxy Customs. It is the best piping ever. Now, there are multiple ways that you can do this piping here or this edge here. I chose to do the raw edge. So all along my cork, like all around, along this piping here is all raw edge. I don't know if you can see, I have it all edge painted so it's shiny. Um, but in the pattern, she also shows you how to do it with the fraying fabric so um, yeah but in this tutorial I show you how to do it with a non fraying fabric for attaching the piping to this panel here so you definitely can use uh, cottons if you wanted to if you're using a vinyl or a non fraying fabric you can do it the way I have chosen to do it in the video again there's full instructions in the pattern and I did edge coat with my Giardini edge coat uh, edge paint all of my raw edges so it just gives it a nice and clean finish um what else, what else? Yeah, I do use double-sided tape in this, as you guys all know. Know the sensitivities of your machine when you're choosing whether you're gonna use double-sided tape or if you are going to use clips. You know your machine better than I do, so yeah, go on and do that. I always use double-sided tape, but I am on an industrial, so I don't have any issues with this. This is 100% domestic machine friendly. Almost every pattern is domestic machine friendly based on the materials you choose. So again, know the sensitivities of thicknesses for your machines and choose your fabrics accordingly. Um, even using foam, it is, it is perfectly domestic machine friendly. If you just compress that foam or use a serger when you're putting the foam on or trim off the excess foam within the same allowances. Uh, again, thank you, Marie Jo, for allowing me to do this tutorial. And how about we get to making this bag? So you're going to need some rivets, number five zipper tape, some piping. I'm going to use O-rings, so four O-rings or rectangular rings, four op optional strap ends, a zipper end, three number five zipper pulls, optional five or six purse feet and your nameplate. You're also going to need some foam for your stabilizer. 
your four connector pieces. Now I have two small ones as I am going to be doing hidden connectors instead of metal connectors. These are my handle pieces. I have decided I am going to do a double sided handle so I've cut my pieces accordingly. My lining zipper pocket pieces, my exterior zipper pocket pieces, my vinyl piping pieces, my main pattern piece like so, cut a mirror to one another, and I've also edge painted this raw edge where the piping will be going. Two lining and two exterior zipper panels. I'm adding a slip pocket in. My two lining top pieces, two lining pieces. My bottom uh, exterior and lining with the deck of all heavy outside of the seam allowances. My other front panel pieces mirrored to one another. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my double-sided straps. If you need a class on how to do that, it's down below in the description. I'm also gonna go ahead and make my own piping. If you need a class on how to make piping, that is down below in the description as well. Okay, so now we've got our piping piece and our main panel piece here. Now you can see on this main front panel piece, this is the piece that has the zipper pocket on it. There's some markings where our piping is going to begin. So I'm just going to mark that on the right side of the, um, of the pattern or of the piece here. Um, I've also kept the inside of the piping about an inch in through my vinyl because we do not want to be sewing through our our piping cord, we want to make sure we can veer that off. So on the wrong side of this, I'm going to put some double-sided tape right up to that mark that we made. And I'm going to take my end of my piping that I have the cording kind of cut out of the vinyl and put back through and I'm going to line it up right at that mark like so and line it along that raw edge that we had previously edge painted, which is optional. You could also just leave this raw if you wanted. Now, if you wanted to not have a raw edge here, there are instructions in the pattern as to what to do if you have a fraying fabric here. So mark or stick this all the way down like so. And when you get to this corner, just put a few snips into the piping piece just to help veer it around that corner, spread the fabric out so it curves nicely like so. Now we want to make sure we cut the cording that's in our piping about an inch or so into the seam allowance and I'll show you how I do that here. So I'm going to trim my piping up like so. Now I'm going to take my piping here and I'm going to just kind of cut some of those basting stitches from my piping up to about an inch or so. So just pull out those basted stitches, pull back the outside part of your piping, again minus vinyl, you do the same if you are using a cotton piping. Pull it out to expose the cording in the middle and cut that back by an inch or so like that and then pull the outside uh, back out and that'll just leave no piping inside there and that'll just make it so you're not breaking a needle when you sew through this later on. It'll just take away some of that bulk. So again you have that at the start and at the end of the piping. Now on this part where we had uh, started our piping, we want to kind of veer it down at that mark like so, and that's going to hide the raw edge of that piping and make it look like it has a stop there. So I've stuck that down with double-sided tape. You could also hold it together with a clip, which I'm going to do like so. And I've done that for both pieces. You can set that aside for now. Now we're going to go ahead and prepare our uh, connectors, our two longer connectors. I'm going to use double-sided tape here. I'm going to go ahead and down that center line that we have drawn, put some tape and fold those long edges into that center line. Go ahead and do that with all four connectors. Okay, go ahead and put the two shorter connectors if you're doing heading connectors like me and put them aside. Measure down as per the pattern measurements from one of the short ends of the two longer connectors. On the wrong side of these connectors, we're going to go ahead and put some double-sided tape about a little bit at the very top where we drew that line. Put your uh, connector ring 
to that line that we just drawn and fold it around the back, wrong sides together like so. Then take some more double-sided tape outside of where you'll be top stitching and stick it down the middle. This will help hold it in place when we want to go and put this on the exterior of the bag. Measure down from where the connector meets by about three quarters of an inch. Do the same with the opposite side. Okay, so you can see on this pattern piece, I have already cut a little slit where my connector placement is, just at that top of that line there. And what I'm gonna do is just take my erasable pen and draw along that line and then down the sides like so. I put little slits in, and that's just gonna help me place these connectors nice and straight. Where our connector is folded over our a circle ring here, you're gonna go ahead and line that up as long as well as down that right hand side. I'm gonna do the same with the opposite side of course this piece is mirrored so you have your pattern piece upside down mark where your slits are and go ahead and place the other long connector just like the other one next what we're going to do is take this to the machine top stitch up here across that three quarters of an inch line and back down the other side to put that connector in place Okay, so that's our two front and back connectors for this piece aside are, are done. Go ahead and trim that connector up to follow the shape of these pieces. Now what we wanna do, I've also gone ahead and I'm just gonna put some little holes where the rivet placement is and mark those with my erasable pen like so for later. Do the same on the opposite connector. I'm also gonna put one right above that three quarters of an inch line that we drew just to give it a little extra security when we go to do the rivets. We are not doing the rivets just yet. We're just putting the rivet placement to make it a little bit easier when we get there. You're also gonna notice on the pattern piece, this dotted line, and I've gone ahead and I put little slits in there and I'm going to line this up with my pattern piece. Kind of hold your pattern piece in place so it doesn't shift. We want to get these placement marks nice and straight. And then I'm going to follow down that dotted line with my erasable pen through those slits that I cut to mark where we will be placing our other front our other main panels with the piping pieces onto these pieces. So you'll do the same with the opposite one. Of course the pattern piece will be mirrored and you flip it upside down to do that. Okay, so now we're gonna put these together. So just below that dotted line we just drew, I'm gonna put some double-sided tape here. You don't have to use as thick of double-sided tape as I'm using here. You may wanna use thinner to keep it outside of where you're gonna to be top stitching if your machine is sensitive to it. Remove the paper backing of your double-sided tape. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to line this up and stick it on top. So these are both right sides up and your piping should sit just slightly like an eighth of an inch above that marked line that we marked. So you shouldn't be able to see the line that we marked. And if you have this placed properly, you will see it'll form a nice and fluid top edge to our main panel piece. So it goes nice and straight with no curves across the top. I have to adjust it a little bit here to make that happen. There we go, perfect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and top stitch down here, all the way down that piping and over here to put those in place, as well as do the same with the opposite side yet mirrored. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm putting my left zipper foot on here. This is going to help me get nice and close to that piping along that raw edge of that one, um, that one 
main panel piece right below the piping so it's nice and straight and nice and close and you're not eating up the piping with your walking foot. This is what that looks like all done. She looks pretty good. Now you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take these two pieces as well as the bottom piece. We're gonna put our purse feet on. I'm measuring in two inches from the left and one and a half inches from the long sides is where I'm placing mine. I'm also going to put one in the middle of all of this as well. You could, you may decide to do six. You can decide whatever you wanna do for your purse feet placement. If you need to know how to install these, you can go ahead, check out the bag makers playlist link down below in the description. Next, we're gonna take these three exterior pieces and we are going to back them with foam. So go ahead and baste foam onto those pieces. All right, so those are all backed with foam. Now what we can do is we want to mark where we're gonna be doing our hidden connectors. So this is where you would also mark where you'd be putting your metal connectors if you're doing it. I do not have any metal connectors, so I've opted to do hidden connectors and I will show you how I do that. So I'm using my pattern piece to mark where my hidden connector is going to go and I have drawn a line. Now I have adjusted this for one inch connectors rather than three quarter inch connectors. So I'm making sure I am drawing a one inch line here on both pattern pieces. Next, what we wanna do is we want to cut into that one inch line that we just drew. We don't wanna make this cut too big. It's better to be slightly small. So I'm just gonna kind of start that cut with my rotary cutter and then take my scissors in and do all the way out to the edges of that one inch line. Now you wanna take the foam on the back, being careful not to cut your exterior um, materials. You just wanna cut the foam away from that one inch cut mark that we just cut. This will just help with bulk when we wanna go ahead and do our hidden connector here. So just cut it away about a one inch by one inch-ish type box, exposing that line that we just cut through for our hidden connector, just like so. Again, being careful not to cut the exterior. Okay, so we're gonna take our connector piece. We have that wrong side up. We're gonna mark approximately the halfway mark, which is two and a half inches. And with this wrong sides up, but our exterior piece right side up, we're gonna put it into that one inch slit we did and line up that half inch mark that we did. And we're gonna go ahead and, and sew this in place just through the connector above the slit mark of our main exterior piece. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put on my left zipper foot here, again. Sorry, this is my right zipper, no, it's my left zipper foot, I lied. <laughs> and again, you're sewing just about an eighth of an inch through the connector, just the connector above that slit that we cut in that exterior piece. Do not so below that slit, this is above that slit. Just through the connector, you do not want your stitches to show onto your main panel piece. It's just through that connector piece. Do the same with the opposite side. Again, above that slit. I do have a class on how to do hidden connectors down below in the Bag Makers Basics playlist linked in the description below as well if you need a slowed down tutorial on how I do this. Okay, so that's what that looks like. You can see it has caught everywhere, it's secured, and you should be able to put your finger up through that slit. Now I'm gonna take my O-ring and put it onto my connector and then feed my connector wrong sides together through that slit like so. And now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch right below that slit line 
and that is going to secure our connector in place. Okay, so that is all done. I have also gone ahead and I put my rivets in, backed with little pieces of Decable Heavy for extra security, as well as put my nameplate on. Now we're going to work on the exterior zipper pocket. So again, I'm gonna put my pattern piece down on my piece like this, and I have just marked the little ends of where my zipper cutout is going to be like so. Now I'm going to take my exterior zipper overlay, and I'm gonna use some double-sided tape here along the outside perimeter of the top and bottoms of this panel. Again, you might want to use maybe an eighth inch uh, double-sided tape here. I'm using a quarter inch depending if your machine is sensitive to the stickiness of the double-sided tape or not. And I'm going to line my zipper overlay uh, short cutout ends like so with those marks that I just made. I'm going to make sure it's nice and even from the bottom and straight. Once I have that top nice and secured, I'm gonna go ahead and take the paper off the bottom part of the overlay and stick it in place like so. And then what we wanna do is along the exterior or the outside perimeter, we're gonna go ahead and base this in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and pull my threads long so I can tie them off in the back. If you're not tying these off in the back, make sure you back stitch well so your stitches don't come loose. That's what that looks like all done. Now what we want to do is we want to cut that center part out like so. So I'm just going to start with my rotary cutter going into that center of where the opening of our zipper overlay is. Now you're going to cut little V's underneath the overlay. Don't cut into the overlay. We're only cutting away the main exterior of the bag. You can see the little V's there. And I'm going to trim my foam outside of the uh, seam allowance first. Not going past that stitching, do not cut it into the stitching. And then you're gonna do the same and cut away the exterior main panel, making sure you are not cutting your zipper overlay. This is just gonna reduce some of that thickness in there. So you can see here how, once you cut that away, you can see the zipper overlay hanging out underneath all of this. And that is exactly what we want. So cut as close as you can to the stitching without cutting the stitching, taking away that bulk behind the zipper overlay.
looks like. You can see we have that opening there. I'm going to take some double sided tape and place it along the wrong side, right along the top edges of where that zipper opening is. And now we're going to prepare the zipper lining pieces of it. So I'm going to use double sided tape here. You're more than welcome to use clips, of course, on the top along sides of our lining zipper pocket pieces. I'm going to put some double sided tape. Now these are right side up and I'm going to take my zipper also right side up and stick it or clip it down. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then do the same with the other lining piece and the other unsewn side of that zipper. gone ahead and I've pressed my zipper open so my zipper teeth should be right side up and you will notice that our lining pieces are right side down which is what we want. I'm making sure my pull is closing to the left and then I'm going to take the paper off the double sided tape on my overlay and I am going to stick it down uh, making sure it's nice and straight to my zipper to prepare for top stitching in place. Now you want to make sure your lining zipper Panels are butterflied out, open from one another, because you do not want to accidentally sew this shut. Now, I do have a class on how to do zipper pockets with overlay, also linked down below if you need a slowed down class on how to do this. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to top stitch around that inner rectangle to secure that zipper in place. That is all done. Now we want to fold our lining panels or right sides together like so. Trim off any excess there may be. And then just through our pocket pieces here, we are going to stitch around the three raw edges to close up this pocket. Again, making sure you are not sewing through your exterior. So I like to get as close as I possibly can to the stitching. Sew down one side, the bottom, and up the other side. so that's all done like so you have a functioning pocket go ahead and trim up that seam allowance and trim back that zipper tape if needed that is your front main panel complete okay so now we want to find our top and bottom centers of both our back and our front main panels I just like to do little snips. You can do marks if you prefer. And then we have our bottom piece with our purse feet already done. We have our top and bottom centers marked as well. Go ahead and put these right sides together, matching up that center. 
and clip into place. Now you will notice that this bottom piece does not go all the way to the ends, but goes to almost where our little cutouts are on the bottom of our main panels, which is exactly what we want as this is a boxed corner bag. So that will leave room for boxing corners later. Make sure your zipper pocket is flipped up and out of the way before you sew this and then sew down here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, push the seam towards the bottom and then top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance through the bottom. Now make sure you're watching the pattern piece or the pattern because our seams change between 3 8 of an inch and a quarter inch a couple times during the pattern. This bottom piece is sewn on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So this is that done. Our seam is pointing towards the bounto panel where we have top stitched it in place. You're gonna go ahead and repeat with the opposite side of the bottom and the other main panel. So this is what we look like here. Now what we wanna do is bring these right sides together. We wanna to line up our pump piping so we have a nice and fluid line and stitch or, and clip the sides in place like so. Same with the opposite side. Make sure you're matching up where the line or where um, our cork meets up and just so we have a nice fluid line. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and we are going to sew down these sides with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's done and now we can go ahead and we can box these corners. Now this is really easy. They should fit when you pinch these together nice and even. Open up the seams if you can and also make sure your bottom seams are still pointing towards the bottom. Flatten that out. Clip it in place. Same for the opposite side. It should go in nicely like so. Pinch it together. And then we're going to sew this in place with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So this is what our bottom looks like. It looks good. If all thing, everything looks caught, go ahead and turn this right side out. Now this is the point where if you are going to be installing the metal connectors for the cross body strap, which I am not doing, you will use the pattern placement and you will be installing those metal connectors right through this side seam here. So make sure you follow the pattern for where to place those connectors if you are doing those. I am leaving them off, but yes, you put them right here. 
Okay, so now we're going to work on our zipper panel. So on the wrong side of our zipper tape, I am going to make a one inch line from the right hand side. That's going to help get our pulls on nice and straight later. On the opposite side with our zipper tape right side up, you're going to kind of pull it apart by an inch or so at the top and fold it down upon each itself on a 90 degree angle on each side, making sure they line up nice and even. And I like to hold them in place with some pins and then go ahead and baste those in place. Once we have those done, you can go ahead and you can trim up the little butterfly areas so they line up with the tape and go ahead and pull the tape apart. Now we're gonna take our zipper panel pieces, our lining side ones. Actually, you're gonna do this for all of them. Measure in a three quarters of an inch line from each of the short ends. Now this is slightly different than how she does it in the pattern. This is just my preferred way of doing a recessed zipper. Put a little bit of double-sided tape on the short ends and fold into that three quarters of an inch line, which gives us a three eighths of an inch seam allowance folded in on those raw edges. Go ahead and do that with all four. Make sure they're all the same size. Now take your two aligning pieces right side up. On one, mark a quarter of an inch from the left-hand side and on the other, a quarter of an inch from the right-hand side. Now with these right side up, you can use tape or you can use clips and go ahead and put some tape from those quarter of an inch marks all the way down to the opposite side. Next, you're gonna take your zippers, which are also right side up. You wanna make sure the curvy part of the zipper that we stitched in place is going to the left for this first one. Again, the zipper tape is right side up and the lining panel is right side up. Line that curvy part up with that quarter of an inch line and stick or clip it in place. Do the same with the opposite side, except for the curvy side will be going towards the right. Next, you're gonna take your exterior pieces, Put some double-sided tape along one of the long edges again or use clips and then you're going to put this right sides together with uh, those zipper linings and the zipper that we just did making sure our lining and our exterior pieces match up and sandwich that tape so the exterior is right sides down we're going to go ahead and stitch through those with a quarter of an inch seam allowance And you're going to give these a good press push, bringing the two uh, exterior and lining pieces wrong sides together as i'm using vinyl and i can't press it i'm going to use some double-sided tape as my pressing agent pulling it nice and tight away from my teeth and bringing these two panels wrong sides together i'm also going to go ahead and along that raw edge i'm going to hold in place with a few clips make sure my sides match up it's important that they do And then we're gonna take this to the machine. We're gonna baste that long raw edge and then top stitch the two short edges along the zipper tape and down the other um, short edge for both of our zipper pieces.
this is the two of them done I'm going to make sure that they're still even in size and they are I'm going to find the center bottom of the raw edges of these panels by folding them in half like so and making small snips again matching up those centers to make sure they are still even and they are now we're going to take our lining pieces now I've already gone ahead and I done my lining pockets uh, the zipper is done the same as we did with the exterior but we are leaving the bottom open for closing it later and I've also put my standard uh, a slip pocket if you need classes on how I do my lining pockets they're down below in the description Okay, so I'm going to take the one with my zipper pocket, which I like to be the back of the bag. I'm going to take my overlay that has my zipper closing to the left, so the curvy side is to the left. Both of these are right side up. You're going to match up those centers of the top of the lining and the center of the zipper panel, like so. And then we're going to do the same with the other side, but the curvy part of our zipper will be going to the right, match up that center, and clip it in place. Okay, next we're going to take our lining top panels, find our top and bottom centers again, do marks or snips. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put that long edge of that lining top panel right sides together with our lining piece sandwiching the zipper panel. So the lining piece is right side up, the zipper panel is right side up, but this lining top panel is right side down add it into the clips, making sure your tail is kind of down and out of the way. We want to make sure we are not accidentally sewing that into the seam. Sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, flip it up so the seam is going towards the bottom of the lining and top stitch that seam in place through the lining panel. So this is our two aligning panels done. Now we're going to take our bottom lining panel and we're going to find the long centers. Now this goes together almost the same as our exterior, but we are going to do it slightly different. So you're going to take the bottom with the lining panel that has the zipper pocket, match up that center and clip into place. Make sure your pocket is out of the way. You don't want to accidentally sew through it and go through here with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I didn't worry about top stitching this, you don't have to. We are not going to attach the other side of the bottom to the other lining piece just yet because we want to leave a full bottom for easy turning for those who are like me with terrible carpal tunnel syndrome and it isn't so hard to turn bags through. So this is my hack to make it easy. Now we're going to put our sides together just like we did with the exterior. We're going to match up where our seams meet for our top lining panels there so we have a nice fluid line and clip the sides in place. Again, the bottom is fully open with only one long side attached to our lining panels currently. Okay, so we're gonna stop, start for about an inch and a half to two and a half inches from the top, and we are gonna go down to about here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then when we reach to the bottom, we're gonna branch out to three eighths of an inch seam allowance, and this is just gonna make it so our lining is a little bit smaller closer to the bottom of the bag so our lining fits more snug inside the bag without it being too loose or droopy so go ahead and do that i've gone ahead and done that we can see everything matches up good now we're going to put it together with our exterior so make sure your hardware is folded down and out of the way we have our lining wrong side out our exterior right side out position it in such a way that you want your lining panels um, 
I like my zipper to be at the back of my bag, so I'm making sure the back panel of my exterior and the back panel of my linings are right sides together like so. Match up that top center with a few clips. Do the same with the opposite side top centers. And then go ahead and match up the center side seams. I like to do clip in quarter sections. I just find it's a lot easier to evenly distribute that fabric when we go to clip everything together. Make sure your zipper tails are down and out of the way so you won't accidentally be sewing through them. Open up those seam allowances on the side panels. Hold in place with a couple clips. Same with the opposite side. And then go ahead and finish clipping the top of the lining and the exteriors together, evenly distributing that fabric in between those quarter sections. time to sew it together. So if I was on my flatbed, I would go ahead and sew it like so from the inside all the way around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you're on a cylinder arm like me or a free arm machine, go ahead and do it through the opposite side with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that is all done, make sure everything was caught all the way around and then go ahead and do an easy turn through the fully open bottom of the lining like so. Again, this is an arm saver for me with Carpal Tunnel. Give the lining and exterior a good tug away from each other, pressing out that seam we had just sewn, making sure that seam is good and that nothing was mixed, missed and there's no holes. I just have my finger running around there to pop it out and stuff your lining inside the bag like so. And then finger press that top seam, rolling it in between your fingers and securing that seam in place with clips, preparing for top stitching. Making sure your lining is pulled down nice and tight because you don't want it to accidentally get caught up there, so make sure it's all tight. I use lots of clips to make sure there will be no slipping all the way around.
Once we have that done, again, I'm gonna take this to my cylinder arm and top stitch the same way I put it together. If you are on your flatbed, you may wanna go ahead and turn your bag inside out and top stitch it from the inside of the bag. So there's the top stitching all done. It caught everywhere. Now we can go ahead and we can close up the lining. So the way I do that is I pull out my zipper pocket that has the opening in the bottom, reach in through that zipper pocket and pull the entire bottom of the lining up and through that zipper pocket. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to match up the centers of the long edge of the main lining panel that we did not sew with the long edge of the bottom panel. It looks awkward, but really it's not. The lining fabric is super flexible and super easy to manipulate, so just take it slow, you've got this. So match up that long edge. We're not worried about those box corners just yet. We're just going to clip those long edges together of the bottom of the lining and the long edge of our bottom panel. Once you have that, you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew across this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. That is done. Now you're going to go ahead and you are going to box the corners exactly like we did with the exterior, match up those center marks, open up those seams, and then you're going to stitch across each side with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. That is the bottom fully sewn in place. Go ahead and stuff that back in through that pocket and then fold in the raw edges of the opening of that zipper pocket and clip them in place. Then go ahead and top stitch this closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That is complete. Stuff your pocket back in there. We're so close to being done. Make sure your lining is popped out nicely inside the bag. You can see how tight of an open or how tight of a fit we have. It looks perfect. Now all you have to do is put your zipper and or zipper pull on by matching up that one inch line, pulling it on nice and straight. 
put on your zipper pull, your zipper end, and your straps. So there it is, my zipper pull is on nice and straight. My zipper end is on, I've riveted my straps on. Double check that there are no holes, that everything was caught really good. Pat yourself on the back, admire your work. This was such a fun make and not a hard one at all, pretty fast. Admire your work and we're done. That's it, that's all. See, not hard at all. I really encourage you to make this bag. This was my first pattern of hers, and I tell you, I love it. I can't wait to work through the rest of her catalog. Anyways, if at any time you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Leave me a comment down below, maybe with a rose or a flower in the comments, so I know that you made it to the end of this video. Um, yeah, share your Hathors on my Facebook page. That's all linked down below. If you have any questions about how to contact me is linked down below as well. Yeah, and if you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. What else do I need to say? I think that's everything. Anyways, until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye.